did we maybe need a new constitution? This is a world This is a world premiere. This is a world Hey, Reg here, and welcome to some more Food for Thought. So, today is gonna be a little bit of an interesting uh, talk. First of all, I'm sitting here with a little thermos of coffee that I made yesterday. Um, I was really, really fortunate, and a friend of mine who's been working in um, an organization that works with folks in the Latina community, the Latino community, um, got access to some coffee. This is um, coffee from, it's Cafe Colectivo, uh, Colectivo Interzona Zapatista, and it's coffee that um, it's um, basically grown by the Zapatistas, and the you know this the um, by purchasing the coffee, the proceeds go to support the work of the Zapatistas, who are basically you know fighting to um, for the right to live on land in their their home country. So it's um, mostly indigenous populations who are you know being displaced in the same way we've seen it happen all over the world over the past few hundred years or whoever since maybe since the beginning of civilization so who's to say i'm not trying to be judgmental but that's what's going on anyway so if you want to support people who are trying to hold on to the land that they have lived on traditionally for thousands of years um uh, that's a cool way to do it and usually you can um i'm not going to basically give you the instructions on how to do it if you were interested in doing it you can probably find someone who's um selling this coffee in your area if you move in those circles, and if you don't move in those circles, then you probably you probably shouldn't have that information anyway. So that's what that's about. So anyway, um, I want to talk to you guys. So um, some words that have been just coming up for me. One is like the idea of like a learning circle, the idea of like study groups, but not in the um, not study groups in the traditional sense, like we're studying because we all go to the same college and we're trying to pass a course, but a study group where we. Um, want to learn more about a subject so we can be just more well versed and more prepared to do the work that we're doing in the communities that we're working in and also this idea of a learning circle which is a um, which is really a traditional form of lear learning that comes out of in you know um, that comes it's an ancient form of learning where the work is specifically being devised to lead us towards having a raised consciousness around the world that we live in and moving uh, ultimately towards action and transforming the world that we live in so I'm sure that that is a very, very con uh, scary concept to some folks, but hey, that's just how we're rolling here. Um, one of the things that really inspired me to do this is that we've been having these conversations about the Constitution, and I've been thinking, you know, we really are at a place in, you know, historically, where we need to reconsider the way that we, you know, the, our values as a society, and are we living according to documents you know, we're living according to these these old, dusty, crusty documents that didn't have as their purpose the liberation of general society, right? They were they had as their purpose the maintenance of, you know, power entrenched within a very, very small group of people. And I'm gonna talk about that a little bit today as we go. Um, I also am very, very interesting. I picked up and started reading Pedagogy of the Oppressed, which I, um, which is uh, by uh, Paolo Freire, and I hope that you can all see that, Pedagogy of the Oppressed, Paolo Freire. And I am really, I started reading this again, and I'm constantly pulling from it um, in the courses that I teach. I generally teach theater of the, the the oppressed. I either am facilitating theater of the oppressed workshops or I actually teach a course called theater of the oppressed which is a civic engagement course through a university. And um, I also have been teaching a course um, called 21st Century Dramatic Text and Intercultural Dialogue. And part of this idea of intercultural dialogue is how do we have, you know, what does it mean to be intercultural in a monocultural like the United States? where people generally tend to shed themselves of their own sort of cultural markers to try to assimilate into what's called American culture, right? And so uh, to be able to hold a space where we're having intercultural dialogue or just the idea of dialogue, Paulo Freire has some really, really, you know, interesting ideas about dialogue as a, as a form of liberation, um, as a tool for liberation. And I've made a few videos about 
dialogue versus, say, debate, right? Because I see one of them as a real a tool for liberation and the other one is more of a kind of confrontational space where all of the parties involved are trying to maintain a position and fight to hold that position, right? Whereas in dialogue, there's an opportunity for movement or, you know, there's probably opportunity for movement, whatever approach you're taking. And so, talking a little bit about the Constitution. So yeah, so this Constitution, right, where you're imagining there's a, the, the Constitutional Convention that happened in, you know, the late 1780s, right? So 1786, maybe 17, uh, uh, 17 I'm sorry, uh, yeah, 1786, 1785, 1786, 1787, right? Those are the, 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 the period of time in, you know, the United States history where you had the folks who were representing the original colonies coming together to talk about, you know, what was going to be the United States, what's going to be the charter for this country. <laughs> yeah. um, and those are the, you know, we call them the founding documents, but really they are the, um, you're not a, you know, you're, you, you don't exist until you can say, hey, here is who we are and here's what we stand for, right? So they had to um, create this document. Or at least traditionally, that's how, th that's how things have been done, right? So we're talking about in the, in the European tradition or the Western tradition. So who comes together? A small group, you know, considering the population of the United States, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but, you know, we're talking about likely in the, you know, hundreds of thousands probably at that point, right? I don't know. I don't know if we were in the millions yet. I'm thinking probably around uh, that time there were maybe three, four million people in, in all of, you know, Great Britain. So, you know, we're probably talking between somewhere between, you know, you know, uh, between, you know, uh, you know, 500, let's say 500,000 in a million, right? I'm too wild guess. And I'll, and I'm going to put like a little thing, a little number. That was my wild guess. I'm going to put the number to see how close my guess was in terms of the population of the United States. But we're talking about a few dozen individuals who were the landowners who were the ruling elite at that time even though a lot of people had risked their lives in this fight for liberty or at least that was the you know that was the ideology behind the the american revolution right people were fighting for liberty well that's what you tell people when you're you know they're poor they don't really have an invested interest in sh setting down their lives right and fighting for their lives so you tell them you talk about freedom you talk about equality you talk about the pursuit of happiness and that's going to get everybody excited about you know about you know fighting for you know about fighting right and you know the truth of the matter is after everything was said and done things are going to go back to the way they were you were going to have this ruling class that was still going to have their foot on the neck of the poor but uh, that was you know that was the rhetoric that was going on but when they sat down to draft this constitution they weren't necessarily thinking about what was going to make everyone happy. They weren't trying to think about the masses. They were thinking about, okay, how am I going to maintain my property? How am I going to hold on to the wealth that I hold, right? How are decisions going to be made so that, you know, this group won't infringe on, you know, what I have and, you know, I'm going to be able to make as much money as I can possibly make, right? So this is where, that's the mode that we're in at this point in the history of the United States, right? We were a big money-making machine and we had been a big, we'd been a big cash cow for, for, um, for England right for the british crown we were a huge cash cow and we decided that we wanted to be our you know we want to be in business for ourselves which is you know, reasonable it's reasonable i'm not going to judge them for that but certainly when they were creating the constitution they were thinking about okay now how are we going to deal with the distribution of wealth amongst um, amongst ourselves um and how are we going to establish uh, the rule of law amongst ourselves. So they came up with, okay, we're gonna we're gonna have we're not gonna have nobility. We're not gonna have you know titles of nobility here. We're gonna have you know elected officials. But who's gonna be electing those officials? We weren't gonna have you know we didn't start out by you know going out and having these you know general elections. We didn't start out with that. Uh, you know we started out with having you know delegates. And the delegates would cast their votes, and the, dele gele the, the delegates were also part of the ruling elite. 
right? And we still have that problem today, right? When we look at like the way the, you know, the election system works, there's this group of people who regardless of what uh, happens in the general election can make the decisions to cast their votes in a very different way. Of course, the idea is that there would be mayhem if they did that, but that's still the reality. So this whole idea that we all have, you know, that we have a democratic process where we all go and we vote and we cast our vote and that vote is meaningful. That vote is only meaningful in so much as the ruling elites decide that they want to go with what the typical people are. And we're being tested, the way that we're being tested in this day and age, at least in the United States, we're seeing that uh, when they break the rules, the people you know, get a little bit up in arms. You know, people may go out in the streets and protest a little bit, but it dies out very, very quickly. And uh, what we're learning in this period is that we have a system of government where the will of the people can easily be, uh, you know, disappointed. Can be disappointed. And we've seen that throughout the history of the United States. So when, when I hear people, you know, seeking to protect the Constitution or fighting for the Constitution, I nowadays, you know, if you'd asked me this a year ago, I would have, I would have said, yes, we fight for the Constitution tooth and nail. We we bleed, bleed for the Constitution. But now that I think back on it, I'm like, whoa, I have been, I have been. I don't want to call myself the victim, but I've certainly been, um, I was, uh, I was living under an illusion. I was living without a critical consciousness of what the constitution really represents. And the constitution from the outset did not take into consideration the rights of women. It did not take into consideration the rights of the poor. It did not take into consideration the rights of, uh, people who were at the time enslaved. So for all of its, you know, color and candy, um, it hasn't been a real protection for the average person. There's been no, uh, it hasn't been a mechanism to protect the average person, right? And so throughout United States history, we have seen huge uh, crimes against humanity. And we're talking about not things that have happened to in other places, in other countries, right? We have seen crimes against humanity. We've seen like the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory, for example, where, you know, an entire uh, building of, of women workers burned to death because the owner of that building locked the doors and there were no laws in place to protect those workers, right? And we've seen the rights of workers stripped, right? And we've seen when it benefits corporations that the rights of workers can be taken away very, very quickly, right? So we have all this unionizing that happened through the country and the struggles of, of labor to win rights, but then as soon as it's no longer beneficial for the ruling elites to confer upon the workers th these rights, those rights are taken away. And they find all kinds of mechanisms to be able to take those things away. So this constitution that we are always so willing to defend hasn't really given us much. It hasn't really given us much. So when people talk about, you know, and this, my, I don't want to be repetitive, but I don't want to talk about my, you know, all the things that I talked about in my last video where I, where I spoke about the Constitution. I think one thing that is really, really important is to have an understanding of what is in the Constitution and what the Constitution really does confer on the average citizen of the United States. So one of these learning circles, study groups, is going to be, definitely be on the Constitution. And I feel that having a conversation about the con Constitution and what it means and what it means to rethink the, constitu the Constitution needs to be framed by, you know, a set of principles. And so, um, so that there can be kind of a set of guiding principles and people can tell me whether or not they agree. I'd like to also read Pedagogy of the Oppressed because Pedagogy of the Oppressed um, frames this idea of revolution as a cultural process, as an educational process, as opposed to a, a violent process. And so to have 
uh, a way of looking at a process for rethinking the formation of society, I would really like to read uh, Pedagogy of the Oppressed. So what I'm proposing is that, first of all, we'll have some um, discussions about the Constitution, and I'm going to be presenting in a series of videos just, uh, you know, what is the Constitution, and I'll probably break it down into chunks, you know, I'll look at the, the various articles and then uh, look at the Bill of Rights, and so we may take the various articles one by one, or we may look at all the articles in one fell swoop, and then we'll start looking at the various, um, the various, uh, the Bill of Rights, and so the, the I'm sorry, the, the, the amendments. Um, uh, the Bill of Rights and the Amendments, and so uh, I figured that that might be one way to form it, uh, to to form uh, to form start forming an opinion, and I think maybe one video a week will be about the Constitution, and then maybe one video a week will be about pedagogy of the oppressed. Certainly, in the the upcoming uh, live stream, which will be this coming Sunday, and um, I think it's Friday the thirteenth of October. I think it's the Friday Friday the 13th of October in 2017. So if you're watching this video on um, before whatever this coming Sunday will be, right? The 34th, the 15th, right? So the 15th uh, of October in 2017, we're going to have a general discussion. We're going to pick up the discussion about the Constitution. But starting next week, the conversations are going to be around um, pedagogy of the oppressed. Right? So uh, there's going to be a set of uh, videos around the Constitution that can be used as tools in some discussions that will happen later. But since um, Pedagogy of the Press, they're like in these very distinct chapters. So um, a week from Sunday, a week from this coming Sunday, so that's the 15th, whatever, you know, that plus seven, right? So I think it's the, the whatever, do the math, do the math. Uh, the 23rd, I think it's the 23rd. Um, uh, so that weekend, what is it, the 19, the uh, 20, 21, 22, maybe the 22nd, 22nd or 23rd of October in 2017, we're going to be reading, um, we're going to be talking about chapter one from Pedagogy of the, the Oppressed. And I'll put the information in the description box below and all that stuff like that, right? So if you're interested in being a part of these like various study groups, let me know if you think it's a good idea. I'm going to do it anyway, but let me know if you think it's a good idea. And if you do think it's a good idea, I might plan ahead for what, you know, study groups might be um, moving forward in the future. So is that it? That's really it. So that's my exciting news. Oh, also, I want to um, point out, um, thank you, um, Bruce Webb, for pointing out that um, you guys, the last, my review of Blade Runner, and I hope that some of you have gotten to see that film. I never talked about, I actually saw Blade Runner in 3D, IMAX 3D. So, you know, my experience of the film was like huge, was pretty huge, right? Um, and I do recommend seeing it on a big screen. However, if you are not the type to watch things on the big screen, you know, that's up to you. I'm sure that you'll still enjoy it. And if you, for whatever reason, are able to see Blade Runner on, in a way that's not on the big screen, I'd like to know what your experience of the film was, because it's certainly going to be likely going to be different than mine. But also, Bruce Webb pointed out that there are several film shorts that you can get for free online that fill in some of the gaps between the original Blade Runner from 35 years ago to the, to the present. So um, I would recommend that people watch those, and I'm going to be watching those and probably talking about those in, in, in some videos to come. Uh, I'm going to try to increase my schedule, y'all. I'm going to try to get four videos a week. I'm going to try to get a video on Mondays and Tuesdays, uh, and uh, I'm going to try to get at least a video on, uh, no, I'm sorry, Tuesdays, and then I'm going to try to get videos, uh, new videos on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, plus the live stream on Sundays. So that is a truly, truly ambitious schedule for me, but let's see how that works. So, um, Again, I'm going to be promising, however, two videos a week, but I'm going to try to, to I'm going to try to double that in the next in the coming months. So that's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourselves. Peace. And I love myself.